all of the seeds we'll be starting this year with the exception of tomatoes and peppers. Y'all, we got a lot of seeds to talk about. Hello and welcome back to Kim's Cozy Corner. I'm Kim and we are going to do our third and final seed video for this upcoming season. This next seed video we're going to talk about everything that I'm going to be growing or not growing in this upcoming season with the exception of tomatoes and peppers if you want to know about tomatoes and peppers please check out my videos specifically to tomatoes where I go through over 70 tomato varieties and for the peppers I believe it's over 30 pepper varieties that I'll be growing or not growing in this upcoming season. But we did a review on all of those. In this video, we're going to focus on everything else. And it's going to be a variety of things, but I don't have seven varieties of squash. So we'll be able to put all of these together into one video. Now I'm going to go through these fairly quickly because there's still a lot of seeds here. Before I get too involved here, I wanted to share some pictures of the spaces that we will be growing in in this upcoming season. So here's a picture of my main garden area where I have tons of raised beds. There will also be green stalks in this area as well and containers in this space. Now, most of the containers will be for potatoes, but there are some containers in this space. In addition to this main garden area, there's my neighbor. So I tell you, I'll plant stuff anywhere. So here's a picture of the neighbor's garden space and it's all raised beds with the exception of one green stalk. So I just wanted to kind of show you, this is the space that I'm working in and I'm getting ready to go over a lot of different vegetables. And you're gonna say, how are you gonna get all those vegetables in that space? Come along with me for the year and you'll be able to see how we're going to grow a year's supply of vegetables in this space that I just shared with you. But let's just get to the seeds. All right. One of the first seeds that I want to share with you is from Harris Seeds. It's called Pak Choi and it doesn't have pictures on the seed pack. So I'll put them up here in the corner, but it's from Harris Seeds. Pak Choi is the name. And it's bok choy, pak choy, all roughly the same thing in my mind, but it's a much smaller bok choy plant. Very sweet. It's a cool season crop. I grew it last year. I grew more than I could eat, um, but it was really, really good. The thing that I liked about this particular seed is that it has a coating on it. Let's see if I can show it to you. There's a coating on this seed, which makes it easier to handle. And I got shaky hands and I have a hard time handling seeds. So pak choy will be one of the bok choy varieties that I'll be growing this upcoming season. Now, all of these next seeds that I'm going to share with you are all cool season crops. And I've already shared with you the pak choy from Harris Seeds. And I also picked up some basic bok choy from my local hardware store. And I like to pick these young, so I call them baby bok choy. And uh, they're so tender and they're so sweet. We'll be enjoying those in this upcoming season. And now we're gonna move into kohlrabi. So I attempted to grow this kohlrabi this past season for my fall crops, but I didn't take care of my fall crops. So they're out there, but they didn't produce anything. I think I planted them too late for one thing. And then I just didn't give them any love whatsoever. So we're going to get these in in the spring and it'll be the first season that I'm actually going to, in my mind, get to enjoy the kohlrabi. So I've never grown it before and had it be successful. For, so this upcoming spring will be the first time. In addition to that, we're going to do some basic Brussels sprouts. 
And I just picked these up from my local nursery. Let's see if I can get the pack so you can see it. And so nothing special about them. Long Island Improved Brussels Sprouts. And so I did grow Brussels Sprouts this past season. I don't think I put them in a great location. They got crowded out pretty quickly with winter squash and cucumbers and tomatoes. And so they kind of got stuck in this hole where they couldn't get much light. So I'm going to give them a better home this upcoming season and we should have a better harvest. And then I have one cauliflower that I'll be growing. I thought I had two, but the seeds were mixed up in the pack for somehow. I don't know what happened, but the pack says that they're cauliflower. I planted them and every seed came up as some kind of leafy green. And so I only have one type of cauliflower and it's called Flame Star and it's from Johnny's. And so here's a picture of it up here. It's kind of a yellowish or orangish color head of cauliflower. And it did well for me this last season. And so I'm gonna to try to plant quite a few more of those this upcoming season. And that's the only variety I'll be growing because the other pack had mixed seeds in it. And then we move over into broccoli. All of these are cool season. So I can have these all in the ground in zone 6A, Southwest Ohio. Um, I can have all of these in the ground outside the end of March. So I'll be starting those seeds very soon. I'll bring you along with me as I'm starting those seeds. And the last cool season crop um, outside of onion, we'll get to those in a minute, is broccoli. And so I will be growing from MI Gardener this del Cicho, i can't pronounce it y'all know i messed something up but i grew this last year as well and this this broccoli it was five feet tall y'all i started it in my indoor growth space i took it outside and when i went to cut it down i'm five one and this plant was every bit as tall as i am so i got a lot of side shoots off of this after we got the main head and it lasted all season long. It could handle that heat. So my broccoli uh, went all season long. The other two broccolis what, that I'll be growing are from Gurney's. Gurney's doesn't have pitchers on their packs, so I'm gonna put pitchers up here for you. But it's called a hybrid premium crop. And here's the picture of that one. And it did really well. I mean, really, really well in my garden. It never got any taller than, let's see, 18 inches or so, which is the perfect height. It gave me tons of side shoots. And I keep my broccoli, after I harvest the main head, I keep my broccoli in the garden the whole season. And I'm always getting those side shoots. So I'm enjoying broccoli along the way. And so the third one is Gurney's Blue Ribbon Hybrid. And here's the picture up here of that one as well. And those are the three varieties I grew last year and they did really well, but I need to grow more. I need more because broccoli and cauliflower are the only two vegetables that my family truly enjoys that I don't grow a year supply of. And so I want to grow more I want to be able to freeze it so that I'm not buying it from the grocery store. Now, I don't have a year supply, but I try not to buy it from the grocery store. But I would love for my family to be able to enjoy more broccoli longer throughout the season. Now we're going to move over to, oh, actually, I missed one. We need to talk about radish. So I will be growing radish. Now, I eat radish. My neighbors eat radish, so when I'm growing in their garden, I make sure I put radish over there. But no one else in my home likes radish, so I grow for co-workers, and neighbors, and myself. So there are three varieties that I'll be growing. I'll be growing the purple plum. And it's a 28-day to, a 28 day to harvest um, radish. It had a really, really good taste. The early scarlet globe which is your typical radish, nothing special about it. It's 22 days to maturity. So you can get two or three different sowings of this particular radish, actually all radish. Radish comes in so fast. You don't have to wait long for radish. 
we're going to do the icicle radish as well. Now this one is more like a 28 to 35 day radish. It's white. And I grew French breakfast as well. And honestly, I think I grew more French breakfast than anything last year. And I got this one just from my local nursery. And I've had these seeds for a few years. And that's all of the radish. Now I thought I had some daikon radishes somewhere here, but I can't find my seeds. So I gotta find my daikon radish which is a Korean really big radish um, that I want to grow for next year because I want to make daikon. I think I'm saying it right. If not, I'll write it. I'll put it right down here for not, if I'm not saying it right. But I want to make kimchi out of that particular radish if I can grow it in my garden this upcoming year. So I don't have a seed pack. I thought I bought them, so I got to find my seeds. Um, if not, I will be purchasing those as well from a radish standpoint. All right, I told you there were a few seeds that I was missing and I found them and I wanted to cut them in before I went any farther. And so these are cool season crops as well. And y'all, I didn't talk about cabbage. How can I have a video talking about everything I'm growing and I didn't show you not one seed pack of cabbage. Now, <clears throat> I typically grow way too much cabbage and then I can't eat it all. I can't do anything with the cabbage and then it sits out and it just spoils in the garden. At least it's giving back to the soil so I'm not losing anything. But let me share with you um, the few varieties of cabbage that I will be growing. And I divide my cabbage up into three different types of cabbage. And the first one that I have is a heading cabbage but it kind of comes to a peak. It's like a cone shaped cabbage. And I grew this one this past season and y'all, it was delicious. It had a beautiful head. You see how the top comes to that little peak. Um, it was fast growing as well. Let's see how long did it take? It doesn't say, but it was early maturing um, in comparison to some of the bigger heads of cabbage. And I'm not telling you the name because I don't want to mess it up, but it's from Fruition Seeds and it was delicious. And it was the perfect size head. It wasn't so big. You're trying to figure out what to do with the rest of it. One head was big enough to feed my family for one meal. Now, if you're looking for leftovers and that kind of stuff, you might need two heads of that one. And the other one is this early Jersey Wakefield. And it has that same kind of shape as the one I just showed you. This one is from M.I. Gardener. And it matures in 60 to about 75 days. It took a little longer than this one, but same ideal, same shape. A nice um, compact head too. So it was a nice full head. And if I remember correctly, this one was enough to feed my family for about a meal and a half. And then I'm going to do again both the red acre and the golden acre and these are in my mind smaller heads of cabbage um, the golden acre matures in about 60 to 65 days but the red acre matures in about 75 days and it's a really really tight head of cabbage it had great storage life and it had great taste too. And then the last category of cabbage is what I call my Chinese cabbage, um, where I'm making kimchi. I mean, I will just take this and put it in a pot and steam it and eat it as well, but um, I'm going to do the Hilton Garden this year. So this is kind of, this is my Napa type cabbage. So I said Chinese, but Napa is the, I guess you would say the variety, but Hilton is the, the one that I'm going to grow this year. Hilton had a nice size. It didn't give me such a massive barrel head. I'm trying to figure out what to do with the rest of the head. It was the perfect size. So one head was a meal for the family. Now, <clears throat> these outer size leaves here, they wilt down to not much. But down here, closer to the stem, the thicker, darker white leaves, um, you know, you have to cook them to get them tender, but they had a sweetness to it. So Hilton 
will be the Napa cabbage I'm going to grow this year. And I'm only growing Hilton. If you want to talk about cabbage that I had way too much of, Napa cabbage. I made kimchi. I made stir fry with it. I steamed it and my family was tired of eating cabbage. So I ended up with so much extra cabbage because I, I overdid it with my Napa cabbage. So that's it for the cabbages, adding them back in. And the other vegetable that we didn't talk about is carrots. Now I had my best season ever in my suburban home garden this past year. Here's a picture of some of the carrots that I got. Now, typically I can grow carrots, but they're usually tiny. They're very little and the ends of them get all twisted up because I don't have the best na uh, native soil. But all of my beds are now fully potting soil mix. And so it's light, it's fluffy, and I have enough depth there now that I had a wonderful season with carrots and I like them. Big carrots, y'all. I want them long and I want them thick all the way around. I don't like those little skinny ones. The first one we're going to do is from Gurney's. So it's from Gurney's. That's the name of the company. And the carrot is a hybrid envy. Hybrid envy. Now, here's a picture because Gurney's doesn't show pictures unless you go to their website. But here's a picture of that carrot. It did just okay in the garden. I had it in my green stalks and it took them a while to get started. Once they finally germinated, I was able to get a nice size harvest. And then we're going to do the Danvers 126. Now I have Danvers from many different companies. Um, most of them are from Burpees. Danvers is a 75 day to harvest carrot and I had it in the green stalk and it did well in the green stalk and it has a great taste. What I like about them is that they're very uniform. I mean, they're not the longest carrot, but they can get up to seven to like eight inches long. Nice carrot. Now these next carrots are the ones I'm most excited about. These are the ones that went all out in my garden this past year. I mess it up, so I'm gonna just show it to you. In the picture, they're showing dirt and all. But this is a long storing carrot. It's a nice size carrot as well. It doesn't say how long the carrots will get. But if I remember correctly, they were every bit six inches long and nice shape, nice size. I had them in the green stalks and I think I had one bed in the garden. I'm getting mixed up on where this particular carrot all was. I know it was in my green stalk. I started them indoors, moved them outdoors, and was able to get a good harvest. My second best producing carrot was Corral. And Corral was in my raised bed garden, and I had two plantings of the Corral, and it did amazing. The carrots were between, it says they could get up to nine inches long, I think mine were more like seven or eight inches. I don't think I quite got nine inches, but they were thick. They were nicely shaped. And I had them in this teeny little space that was getting covered up by uh, flowers and kale and other things, but they continued to produce. And y'all, we were able to can carrots. Now, I have one person in my family that will eat them fresh, and then I have one that will only eat them cooked. So between the two of them, I was able to provide carrots for the family. And then the best producing carrot, the number one producing carrot in my garden this past season was the St. Valerie. And this carrot can get up to 12 inches long, y'all. But you got to have plenty of growing space and nice loose soil. Uh, because if you don't, they'll, they'll start turning and bending, trying to get around whatever's stopping them from growing down. But this St. Valerie is a French variety and it was super sweet. It was tender and super straight. And this was the best producing carrot in the garden last season and we will plant it again. Now, let's get back to the rest of the seed review. Now, we can talk about onion. And 
I will be planting onion within the next week. So I'll have a video going on onion very soon. And for the onion, I'm going to be growing. And so for those who don't know, there are, onion is divided up into short day, or um, I don't know what you call the intermediate um, day, and then long day onions. And usually if you live farther south, you are growing short day onion. If you're living in the north, you're growing long day onion. And I don't, maybe it's neutral. I can't remember day neutral. It might be what it's called in the middle there. But y'all, I grow all of them. I don't care if it's short. I don't care if it's long. If I like it, I'm going to grow it. And I had my best season ever this past year with onion. Now we got off to a rocky start because some of my seeds didn't germinate and I had to purchase more seeds. But once I got good seeds, I got them started indoors. They were healthy. I got them in the ground. I made sure I gave them plenty of fertilizer because onions are heavy for uh, feeders when it comes to fertilizer. And y'all, we had an amazing harvest. Look at this picture. Look at this picture of my onions, y'all. All right, so let's talk about the onions that I'm gonna grow. I will be growing the yellow sweet Spanish onion. Now, usually your sweet onions don't have a long shelf life, so they don't store well. But the sweet onions, y'all, are delicious. So we definitely will be growing that one. We will also be growing, from a sweet onion standpoint, we're going to grow the Walla Walla. And I got these online from, where did I get these from? Homegrown Heirloom Seeds. Um, just the company I found on Amazon. That's the name of the company. But Walla Walla Onions, there's a picture of it here actually grow very well for Southwest Ohio Zone 6A. Walla Walla are very sweet onion and they can get really big too. We'll be doing um, the white Spanish as well and they're from heirloom seeds as well. The white Spanish, here's a picture of that one. I'll be doing the white grano, white grano from heirloom seeds as well. I purchase seeds from, it's called David's Seeds off of Amazon. And y'all, I didn't have good germination with them. I, I've purchased seeds from them now two different times and the germination hasn't been great. But I have no more red burgundy uh, onion seeds with the exception of these. So we'll be growing the red burgundy, hopefully, onion seeds and they're from David's Seeds, and they're off of Amazon because I, I just don't wanna buy onion seeds this year if I don't have to. So we're gonna get those seeds in the ground and see if they germinate quickly because if, if they don't germinate and then and once I get them in the ground within a couple of weeks, if they haven't germinated, then I can get another seed order in quickly. And then there are two more onions that I'm growing and they're not sweet onion, but they're interesting, y'all. I'm going to grow this global. Look at the size of that onion, y'all. I grew it this past season. It did well now. My onion didn't get that large, but they did very well, and they had a good taste, and they're storing pretty well for me as, uh, uh, in storage. So I still have onions in storage right now. We're in January, and... I have some onion that started to come up on me. And so I just diced those up. I threw those in the freezer so I can extend the life of those onion. And then I still have onion downstairs in my basement, in my coolest, driest storage area. And they're still doing well. So I'm not buying onion from the grocery store anymore. And the last one is this yellow of, of Parma, yellow of Parma. And it's a long day onion and it's an Italian variety. And um, it just looked good, y'all. So we're growing that one. This one's from Baker's Creek as well. So I got Baker's Creek and then a few places off of Amazon. And that's it. Those are the onion that we're going to start very soon. So be watching out for that video from an onion standpoint. Now we're going to move on to our herbs next. From an herb standpoint, some of these herbs are perennial. They'll come back every year, as long as you take good care of them in the off season. Um, and some of these, you just need to plant them every year. So I like to plant these every year. Sometimes they come back and sometimes they don't. 
but we will be doing chives. Now I didn't do chives this last year. I planted them two years ago. They did come back, but they didn't come back very well. So we will not be, uh, we will do chives again this year. And I have a ton of dried chives put up. So it's not like I had to buy them from the store. We'll be doing two different types of parsley. And so here's some good pictures so you can see them. Um, one is from Burpees, the other one is from M.I. Gardener. One is an extra curly dwarf plant so they don't get really tall and the other one is a flat leaf. And I just mix them all together, y'all, but I like my parsley. It's one of my favorite herbs now. Now I have some um, oregano, but we will do a few more. And I just got these out of my local, I think grocery store, y'all. So this oregano was is burpees and it's just a regular Greek oregano, nothing fancy about it. And I dehydrate all of my herbs, so I'm not buying them from the store anymore. And my stash is getting low, so we do need to plant a few more than usual. I'll be doing sage, nothing special about the sage either. So there is a third parsley. So I have the extra curled dwarf from Burpees. I have the dark green flat from M.I. Gardener, and I have the triple curled parsley from M.I. Gardener. Sweet marjoram. And last year was the first time that I ever grew this, y'all. It is so sweet. It is sweet. And I used it in place of parsley. I used it in place of basil. And last year was the first time that I ever used it and it was delicious. I loved it. So sweet marjoram. We will do basil. So there's the basil. Um, this is from Botanical Interest. Yeah, Botanical Interest, my basil. And I saved basil seeds from the garden. So I may use some of my own seeds to produce some basil plants. And again, I dehydrate, I save it. So I'm not buying from the store. We'll also do a little more thyme. Now I don't eat a lot of thyme, but this is from Botanical Interest and we will be doing thyme again this year. We will also be doing cilantro and wherever I can get it from, that's where I buy it from. I got this from the local hardware store, big box store. Uh, for cilantro and I have some of my own seeds. So coriander seeds, that's cilantro seeds. And so I have some that I've saved over the last few years. I'll use that as well. All right, all of these, well, actually not all of them. Some of these are cool season crops like your cilantro, your parsley's. Um, those are all cool season crops. Your basil does not like cool weather. It's more of a, a warm season crop. So make sure you read the back of your seed pa uh, packs and the backs of your packages will tell you, you know, the temperature that it needs to be outside for them to do well, uh, how deep to plant them, all of that kind of stuff will be on your seed pack. But that's it from an herb standpoint. I have one more cool season crop and that's celery. Now y'all, I don't need no more celery. I tried to plant five plants last year and I ended up with probably 50. I had celery coming out my ears. I've dehydrated celery. I froze celery. And my neighbor didn't even realize that was growing in their garden. And when they finally did, they started eating it, but they couldn't keep up with it either. So I am truly going to try to only plant five to 10 plants. That's it, five or 10 of celery. And the way I did this celery, I planted it and I would just harvest one or two stalks right off the edge and they'll keep producing. And that way they were able to produce all season long for me. And that's the only celery plant that I'll be growing. It grew very well. And if you like celery and I don't like fresh celery, this would be a good one to grow for fresh eating as well as storing it for the winter. And so I just froze the celery. I chopped it up really fine into the, the sizes that I would eat it well or cook with it. And I froze it in one cup increments or two cup increments. So when I need it, I can pull out what I need. It's already been measured. And I vacuum seal when I freeze my celery or my onion or my peppers. When I'm freezing 
my uh, vegetables, I like to vacuum seal. I just think it gives a better taste. <clears throat> and now we're moving into what I call plants that really don't like those light frost. For sure, we know they don't like any kind of frost. So we're moving into the more warm season crops. And now it's time for us to start talking about cucumbers. Now, y'all, I like my cucumbers. I like my cucumbers. I like to grow a variety of cucumbers and I like to make pickles and I like to make bread and when I say pickle, I mean dill pickle. And then I make bread and butter pickles and I make them in spears and I make them in chips and then I, I, I um, will can them whole. So I like them in all different shapes and sizes. Now, I don't like bread and butter pickles. That's for the family. That's not for me. But since they like it, I will make it for them so they won't buy it from the store. So the varieties that I'm going to grow this upcoming year from my local um, nursery, these are homemade pickles. Now I've found that I prefer to grow um, more pickling type cucumbers than anything because they're sweeter in my mind. Now they're not necessarily burpless, but they're sweeter. I think they're more tender. Um, the skins usually aren't tough on, on them either. So we'll be doing the homemade pickles. We'll be doing national pickling cucumbers. And these cucumbers were really, really good as well. But my favorite pickling cucumber, my favorite one, is this Wisconsin SMR. And this past season was the first season that I grew it. And it was so productive. I mean, it came and kept coming. It was the first cucumber to give me any cucumbers and it was the last one to stop giving. So Wisconsin SMR from MI Gardener is where I got those from. It's an excellent cucumber. I also have the Boston pickling cucumber. And I didn't grow this one this past season. I had it, but I didn't grow it. So we're bringing it back just because I want more pickling cucumbers. Now I tried my best to get this white wonder cucumber to grow. And so I had it from MI Gardener. I also got it from the local big box store and I had the worst time getting these seeds to germinate. And once they germinated, getting them to take off and really do well, I struggled. So I will not be growing the White Wonder. I will not grow the White Wonder this year. I'm switching it up to the Silver Slicer. And here's a picture of the Silver Slicer. And everyone's talking about it on other channels that it was a really good cucumber. So I'm gonna to switch to, that, to this one and hopefully it'll do well for me this upcoming season. Another one that I will not be growing is the Suyo Suyo Long and this past season was the first year that I grew it. It did well. It did very well for me, but <clears throat> wasn't my favorite. It wasn't a favorite of mine. And um, so we will not be growing the Suyo Long and we are going to stick to y'all and I can't pronounce it. So I'm going to have to just show you. I can't pronounce either one of these. So let me just show them to you. And you can see one's from Fruition Seeds. The other one is from Baker Creek. I grew both of these this past season and they both did really, really well too. Which one of these? One of these was so long. How, let me see. This one gave me a cucumber, like it was as long as my, from my elbow to the tip of my fingers. That cucumber was huge and they really had a great taste as well. This one did well and they weren't quite as long. They were more like eight inches long, um, but it did really well in the garden as well. So those are all my cucumbers, and I know that's a lot of different cucumbers, y'all, but I wanted you to see a couple that I'm taking off the list. You might be interested in those though. Um, and so I want you to see them just because I'm not growing doesn't mean that you don't want to grow those, those particular types of cucumbers. So let's keep moving. We will do peas next. So these are what I call cool season crops. So we will be doing the snow pea, uh, melting sugar. And I just got this from a big box store. 
And I'm doing three varieties of peas. Now, y'all, I don't like peas. I don't like them. I don't like them at all. But my girls do. My girls will come in the garden and they'll just go help themselves to some peas, which is great. Let them eat some vegetables. We'll be doing Snowbird, and it's from Burpees. Snowbird. And we will be doing Sugar Daddy. And the Sugar Daddy is on a 24 inch vine, so they don't get as big. And they're from Burpees as well. Now, y'all, I don't spend a lot of time looking for peas. I just get whatever I can quickly put my hands on because I don't like them, y'all. I don't like them. But those will be my peas for this upcoming season. Now, from a shelling pea standpoint, now, a shelling pea, now, it wants warm weather. It doesn't want cool weather like those, like these sugar snap peas. Shelling peas wants hot weather. And so I plan on only growing, I think only one kind this year. Let me make sure I'm not messing up. Yes, I'm only growing one, actually two, two shelling peas. I'm going to be growing the cream zipper pea. And here's a picture of what it looks like right here. It's from Gurney's. I don't have the packet in my hand, but it's from Gurney's. It's called Cream Zipper Pea. I grew it last year. And it's a shelling pea. Um, and it gives you this thick sauce when you take your time and you cook it good and slow. It reminds me of those Crowder peas or Phil peas, those good Southern peas that I'm used to seeing. In addition to that one, I will be doing this... Um, Dimpled Brown Crowder Pea. And this one is from Victory Seeds. So Victory Seeds, new seed company for me this year. And I love Crowder Peas. Crowder Peas, that's my favorite. I love them. And so I'm going to plant this particular brand this upcoming season. And we'll see how it does. Now we will move on over to some beans, y'all. So I am, y'all, I got two year supply of beans already. <laughs> I have so many beans. I'm cooking beans right now for my family, y'all. So when I'm talking about snap beans or green beans, um, I'm still using my 2022 season supply. And I had beans everywhere last year. I had so many beans. So the 2023 season was a bumper crop as well. And so I have so many beans, so I really don't need to plant any beans. But I have this beautiful trellis out there that needs some pole beans on it. So from Gurney's, I will be growing their Blue Lake pole beans. And so it's from Gurney's. And when I buy my beans, I try to buy larger packs of them. But it's from Gurney's. And here's a picture up in the corner here um, of the Blue Lake pole bean. Now, I only planted, I believe, six pole beans. And those are green beans. They just grow on a vine. And they come in a little later than bush beans. But once they start giving, they don't stop. And I had so many beans, I stopped picking them. I wanted them to dry out so I could save seeds for this upcoming year. A friend stopped by. She wanted a few beans. So we picked her a few beans off of there. And then they just started producing all over again. They just went crazy crazy. So don't plant too many pole beans. You don't need that many to get a year supply. But that's the only pole bean that I'll be planting. And I will plant a few bush beans for my neighbor. Um, this one in particular is for my neighbor. My neighbor found that dragon tongue beans was the best bean he's ever had. And he's not a big vegetable eater. The sun's wreaking habit on my video. Um, outside of peppers and tomatoes, he doesn't eat a lot of vegetables outside of salads. But he got a hold of these dragon tongue and he was eating them like crazy. So great for him. I mean, he's in his 70s, so he definitely needs to be enjoying his vegetables, right? So we will plant the dragon tongue for him. Everyone loves the taste of the dragon tongue bean. It has a very distinctive taste, um, but it's a wider bean. Um, I prefer long slim beans. This is a wider bean. 
And so if that's what you're looking for, Dragon Tongue is the way to go. And if you're interested in getting Dragon Tongue beans, you want to get them early. Every year they always go out of stock. About right when you want them, they're, they won't be there for you. So if you want the Dragon Tongue, get your order in early. Now, I will also grow a few plants, not many, a few, because I do want some fresh beans all season long. And of course, I do need to put up a few beans. I want to can a few. And um, I was recently talking to my brother, so I know he's watching these videos as well. And I told him I would start bringing him some of my canned vegetables. Since my family size has gotten so small, that I have all this food and I need to make sure that I'm um, giving others that gift of these fresh vegetables. So I will be providing um, food for my brother as well, who lives about an hour and a half away from me. So there are green beans for you too, brother. So the jade beans, um, I, I think something's wrong with this pack of beans because I could not get these to germinate here. Um, over the last month or so. So we're going to try to get these to germinate again. But if not, I have backups. So I have Landreth growing right now in my indoor grow space. And we will grow a few of those. Landreth is a, uh, they grow up to five inches long on this particular one. I thought I'd share that with you. 55 days to harvest. And Tequa is another bean. It's different. I have never grown this one before. Um, it's 60 days to harvest and five to six inch long bean as well. Very tender pods. Contender from Baker's Creek. We'll be growing this one as well. And Contender is it's an old faithful as well. It has excellent flavor. I think it does. And it usually gives huge yields. And so we'll do a few of those. Now, I said I'm not growing many beans, but y'all see all these beans? <laughs> oh, goodness. And we'll also be doing a golden wax bean, top-notch golden wax bean. We'll be doing that one as well. And then I will be doing a purple bean. Now, the yellow wax bean, this yellow bean will stay yellow even when you, um, even when you cook it. A wax bean will. It stays... Um, it's a uh, more firm bean. It won't get mushy on you. Now, I'm struggling from a lighting standpoint today. So we'll be doing Royal Burgundy from two different companies to see how they do. And I'll probably put these in my green stalk. I usually do a green stalk with one of gold, one of purple, one of gold, one of purple. I'll probably do something like that again just to have some fun in the green stalk. Uh, not that I need any more beans this year, but we will be doing those beans. All right, I changed my setup just a little bit here to get me a little better lighting because that sun was wreaking havoc. So we are going to move over into squash. And there are what we call summer squash and winter squash. Summer squash are those where you're going to pick them. They don't have to cure. You're just going to eat them and they're delicious. And so I am going to grow a couple different uh, yellow summer squash. So let's start there. Crook neck summer squash. And this is just from the local hardware store. So that's where this brand comes from. I, Home Depot or Lowe's, one of those. And then I will also do this straight neck yellow squash and it's from burpees and then i'm going to move into what i call zucchini so the yellow squash they just call it yellow summer squash the green they'll call it zucchini and it's got a whole bunch of different other names as well but i will also be doing this golden zucchini and this is from baker creek and my mom told me, I don't like zucchini. I don't want none of that zucchini. It's mushy. I don't like it. And then she says, you need to plant some more of that yellow squash. This is what I gave her. And she thought she was eating regular old yellow summer squash where this is really just a golden zucchini. I tell you. 
they don't need to know what they're eating as long as it's good for them. <laughs> All right, so in addition to that yellow zucchini, we will be doing the Ford Hook zucchini. And um, it's just a typical zucchini, nothing special, nothing exciting about that particular zucchini. Um, and then I'm getting into what I call some of my specialty zucchinis. Cocozelle, Cocozelle, I guess is how you say this one. And y'all, this squash is delicious. Oh my goodness, it was the best producing um, summer squash. I was ordering potatoes from Wood Prairie Farms and I just picked up a few vegetable seeds. And this, however you say it, was so delicious. It, it was dark green and then it had these little ridges where they had light colored, light green along the ridges. And when I cooked it, it didn't get smushy. It stayed firm when I steamed it or stir fried it. Um, and my mother loved the taste of it. So she said, if you're going to cook that, that zucchini, cook that one. I grow two different types of round squash. Both are from Baker's Creek. And I'm going to be honest with you, once I get them on the vine, I have a hard time telling them apart. Um, there's not as much water content in either one of these round zucchinis. Um, and I believe this one, I believe you can eat it like a winter squash as well. If you just let it stay on the vine longer and you let it cure and let the, the, the skin get tough. But they didn't stay around long enough for that. Um, but... Just good squash and it's something different, different shape. Um, I also like the round zucchini um, for fresh eating where I would just chop it up and dip it in a little ranch dressing. Y'all, you talking about something that's good. Now, whoo, that's delicious. All right, and so then I also get into what I call my scallop types of squash. These are still all summer squash, um, but the shape is more like a scallop or some people call them patty pans. And so this white scallop squash here, I grew it this past year, it was really, really good. We made shish kebabs out of them and my family really loved those around the 4th of July. At least I think it was the 4th of July. It might've been Labor Day, I don't know. But they really loved those. Now this is a uh, Native American squash, this um, white scallop. And so I also picked up a yellow scallop squash this year. This one's 50 days to harvest. And um, I've actually never had this one. It says that it has a creamy texture, extremely buttery and flavorful. So my family should really love this one. I just like the different shapes. And the last scallop or patty pan that I'll be growing is called a G Star F1 OG. That's a lot. G Star F1 OG. And it's from Johnny's. And so I'm putting the picture up in the corner here. And it's a green uh, scallop or a green patty pan. And they didn't do well last year. Um, <clears throat> I think I got one or two squash. Um, I don't think the location was great on them, so I don't think it was anything with the seeds or anything like that. Um, actually, my squash just did okay last year, except for the ones in my green stalk planters. And except for this one. This one was amazing. All of the rest of them, they were just okay. Nothing right home about. But with the number of plants that I transplanted, I should have been overrun by squash. And I don't think I was overrun. I had more than enough. I definitely had to share, but it wasn't a bumper crop um, on any of them, except for this one, which was delicious. Now that's it for my summer squash. And then I'm gonna grow um, some winter squash. <clears throat> now winter squash includes your pumpkins, um, things, things of that nature, uh, butternut, buttercup, um, delicata, <clears throat> all of those acorn squash, all of those are considered winter squash. 
Um, once you grow them, you let them cure. The skin gets really hard and they have a very, very long storage life. So I will be growing kabocha, kabucha, I guess is how you say it. Uh, this will be my first year growing this particular one. Now it takes 85 to 100 days. So I have to get these in the ground as quickly as I can after the ground warms up. So I can't go in right after the first, fro uh, the last frost because the ground could still be too cold. But as soon as that ground warms up just a little bit, I got to get them in the ground <clears throat> because they need 85 to 100 days. So I want to make sure they have time to grow. I'm going to also grow the buttercup. And I tried to grow it, and I know my seeds look horrible, y'all. <laughs> but I tried to grow this buttercup last year, and I didn't, I didn't get... I had good germination, but they never really took off in the garden. And again, I think it had to do with location on some of these. Y'all, I did grow this one now. Now, I've grown this one for two years in a row. And my neighbors say it tastes, it remind them of acorn squash. And they loved it. Now, y'all, I don't eat none of these. I typically don't like winter squash. They say that <clears throat> these two are supposed to taste like sweet potatoes. Now, hopefully I'll have some this year and I'll be able to give you my opinion on whether or not they taste like sweet potatoes. This one, I know I don't like it because I don't like acorn squash. So my neighbors love it, so it's never for me. Now this squash vines like crazy. <clears throat> the vines went all over my neighbor's garden it went up the trellis, over the trellis, over to the next container or raised bed, bypassed that one, went up the trellis on the third one, came down that one and wrapped around the garden. So this one trellises all over the place. And we ended up with, was it four or six? I think it was six really good fruit. It did take a long time for it to really fruit <clears throat> and come in, but my neighbors are enjoying them still now and they are still good to go. They have cured and they're eating on them all winter long. Now, I said I didn't like winter squash. Um, the reason I don't like it, it has this aftertaste to me. There's something that's left behind in pumpkin and in butternut and acorn squash and all of those different things. It tastes good up front, but on the back end, something about it I don't like. And so I found this variety that truly tastes like sweet potatoes and it's called Australian butter squash. And I started buying this from Azure Standard two years ago now. And I made a sweet potato pie, at least that's what my family thought it was. And they thought it was the best tasting sweet potato pie they have ever had. Y'all, it was winter squash. It was called Australian butter squash. Y'all need to try this. Now, I haven't found these seeds anywhere else other than Azure Standard. And I got these from Azure Standard. And I grew them this past season. And I think I ended up with four that I saved, I cured. And I have eaten one of the four. And it was delicious. The family loved it. And so we have now started cutting these up um, like yams. And we're even eating them like yams versus just mixing them up for a sweet potato pie or a sweet squash pie. And so this is my favorite winter squash. I hope you can see the name. And I really, really say, hey, give it a try. I think you'll love it too. So that's it from the squash standpoint. We are, we're, we're almost there, y'all. Home stretch. Thanks for hanging in there for me. Maybe there's something in particular you're waiting for me to cover. Y'all, I'm growing corn this year. Never grown corn before, but I'm going to grow these two varieties of corn. Now, this corn right here, they call it the Orchard Baby. 65 days to harvest. And it's an early maturing sweet corn. Uh, with delicious flavor but here's the part that i like about it 
The stalks are only three to five feet tall and each one will bear only about two ears. So it's not gonna be very productive if you're only getting two ears on each one, but the height is what's important to me. It's only three to five feet tall and that's something I can work with. So we're gonna give it a try. The second one <clears throat> is a white corn and it's also from Baker's Creek. It's good for cool soil germination and early harvest. Now these are short three to four foot stalks. This one is three to five feet tall. And so if, <clears throat> if you've been following me, you notice I really look for dwarf varieties. Whether I'm talking tomato plants, peach trees, apple trees, I'm always looking for a dwarf variety. And for the size of these, if it's only three to four foot tall, y'all, I could put that in a green stalk. I don't have a green stalk for it though. I don't have a green stalk for it, but I do have a couple garden beds for it. And with them only being three to five feet tall between the two of them, I'm sure I got a home for it and it won't shade out too many other vegetables in my garden. All right, so then there's another one of those plants that I don't eat, but I grow for my mother and that's okra. Clemson spineless is old faithful for us when it comes to okra. That's her overall favorite. It's a very common okra. A lot of people grow that one. It's 50 to 60 days to harvest. But I'm also going to grow this red burgundy okra. My mom says she's never had red okra before. So we're going to grow this one. It's 55 to 60 days to harvest. The pods are about six inches in size which is twice the size of this Clemson spineless. So <clears throat> about three inches and then six inches here. And so that's okra for my mom. I don't eat that stuff. Ooh, I don't eat it. Y'all, I tried to eat it fried. That stuff too slimy for me. I just don't like okra, but my mom loves it. So it's all for her. Now I do have eggplant from a seed share <clears throat> that I will grow again this year. And I also have diamond eggplant. And eggplant likes hot weather, hot weather. And it's 75 days to maturity on this one. Uh, these eggplants are harvest, they're ready to harvest when they're about nine inches long. And it also says that they're container friendly. Now I'll be growing them in my raised bed. I don't know, I might put one in one of my green stock pockets this year. That'll be something different. And we don't eat a lot of eggplant, but I do like eggplant. And I wish my family liked it a little more. So I want to definitely um, grow more in this upcoming season so we can start doing more recipes with eggplant. The last type of vegetable are gonna be my melon. So we will talk about my cantaloupe type melons first. So this past season was the first time ever that I got a, a really nice harvest of cantaloupes and they were so good, they were so sweet. So we're gonna do that again. And I found the best place in the garden for them. And Honey Rock was the best cantaloupe in my garden this past season, Honey Rock. I'm gonna keep trying because whatever we did last year, I'm gonna try to replicate that. I'm gonna try to grow this Edisto 47 just a cantaloupe, nothing special. I don't know much about it. It's resistant to a lot of the elements of other uh, types of cantaloupe. So we'll see how it does. It's a medium sized fruit. This honey rock is a three to four pound fruit where Edisto is a three to five pound fruit. And now I'm gonna get into some melons that aren't quite cantaloupe, but I'm not quite sure what they are. <laughs> We're gonna do both a green flesh and an orange flesh honeydew. So they're both honeydew. One's just green and one's just orange. Um, the orange flesh has a maturity of 75 to 110 days, this one does. The green flesh is a 90 day. The orange flesh is five pounds. The green is three to four pounds. So I tried to grow both of these last year. I got nothing, I got nothing. But we're gonna try again this year. We're gonna grow this 
Noir des Carmes. Yeah, whatever. I know that ain't right. Can you see it though? We're going to grow this one. It has a dark, dark skin and an orange flesh. Um, the fruits can be small though. The fruit's only like two to four pounds. So these are tiny little things. It's a type of cantaloupe. They're French. So we'll try that out. It will produce three to five fruits per plant. And it doesn't get a lot of the powdery mildew. So that one's going to be new for us this year. And then I've had no luck on watermelons, y'all. I've tried every kind of watermelon there is out there. I think I got one sugar baby last year. That's it. Even though I had several plants throughout the garden. But I'm not giving up, y'all. I'm not giving up. I'm going to try that sugar baby again. And sugar baby is an 8 to 12 pound fruit. And then I'm also going to try this moon and stars watermelon. And it has a really dark um, skin with one large spot on it. So I think that's why they call it moon and stars. Now it says this can get up to 20 to 30 pounds. I'll take anything. It could be a 10 pound fruit, y'all. I just want to grow some watermelon. I love watermelon, but I can't grow it. So we're going to try to grow watermelon as well. So that's it. That's every vegetable that I plan on growing this year outside of the tomatoes and peppers, which are in other videos. I hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications. That way you'll know when I'm starting to plant these seeds and you'll see how I'm starting the seeds and how I transplant and how I prepare and how I prepare the garden. I will have videos taking you along with me the whole way. Until next time, and I hope there will be a next time where you come back to Kim's Cozy Corner. Bye.